Good morning. Uh, my name is Francis Maud. I um, was the minister in the UK government responsible for the program of open data and transparency between 2010 and 2015, but uh, I've escaped from government now, and uh, I'm now a, a, a free spirit um, and, uh, and able to be a little more controversial than I used to be. Uh, I, I finally left government two, a bit, nearly two years ago now, uh, and I now spend my time working with other governments on issues around efficiency, public sector reform, uh, open data, digital, uh, and transparency. Um, uh, now, the controversial bit. Um, I spent 27 years as an elected legislator. Uh, I, was, uh, I fought, uh, I think, eight elections, uh, won seven, had a period uh, released uh, from service, privatized by the electors. Uh, and, uh, uh, I, 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 and my experience is that most people don't want to participate if things are going okay. At a time when levels of trust are reasonably high, most of our citizens want to elect their representatives to get on with it. And they want to hold them to account every three, four, five years, whatever it is. So what's gone wrong that where we have this uh, certainly high level of distrust uh, in the mainstream political parties that has happened uh, really over the last, I don't know, 10 years, but particularly uh, recently. A and the blame has to be principally with elected politicians who seem to be out of touch with what their voters care about. Uh, and you know, I'll give you the example of the vote uh, 18 months ago uh, in, uh, on Brexit in the UK. Uh, all of the, and I, uh, there were leavers, there were remainers, uh, I found a very comfortable fence to sit on uh, and took no part in the referendum. I'd been Minister for Europe, so I knew a bit about it. Uh, the truth is that the main, all of the mainstream parties uh, advocated strongly a vote to remain, uh, and a majority of those who voted, not a big majority, voted the other way. There was a serious loss of trust in what people were being told. People didn't believe the assertions that were being made. Now, my experience is that the first step in rebuilding trust is openness and giving out information. Uh, one of the things we did uh, in the government in the UK was to be very open about what was going on with the major projects. The government was spending 400, 400 billion pounds or so on the major government's major projects. We set up an authority uh, to oversee those projects and we published the rankings. We published how well the, those projects were going. And this was unprecedented. A government saying, we're running this big project, we're spending tens of billions of pounds on it, and it isn't going very well. And of course, when, and, and, and my colleagues were very anxious, nervous about this. They said, all you're doing is giving the media and our opponents ammunition to fight against us. But the truth is the media started to lose interest because they weren't dragging the information out of the government. If the government volunteers information, uh, then uh, volunteers the bad news, then people start to believe you when you talk about the things that you claim are going well. And I'm about to be stopped now, but I could. Uh, so let's uh, think about the key thing, starting point, is be open, give the inf volunteer information. Make, my ambition always was to make freedom of information laws completely redundant because everything that should be published should be published proactively, spontaneously, and there should be nothing left. It's a council of perfection and it'll never happen, but it's a very good way to approach it. Thank you.